Citrus farmers in South Africa are rallying their governments to lodge formal complaints with the World Trade Organization against the European Union's stringent citrus black spot regulations. These measures, introduced in June 2022, demand stricter cold treatment for citrus exports, citing pest and disease concerns. Farmers contend that these rules, targeting false codling, moth and citrus black spots, could slash orange exports to Europe by 20%, endangering numerous jobs and incurring an additional annual cost of about 2 billion rand. That's approximately $106.98 million for risk management. Accusing the EU of protectionism, the Citrus Growers Association of Southern Africa asserts the efficacy of South Africa's existing pest control measures, urging swift governmental intervention and a WTO dispute. CGA aims to actually counter these regulations and preserve jobs, including revenue that is to come through that angle. Now, joining me from Johannesburg, South Africa, is Clive Ramatebele smith is the senior executive partner, Hector Capital and Partners. Hello, Clive, can you hear me? Good day, thank you very much for having me, my brother. All right, thank you so much for joining us. Now, we see a standoff between the EU and the CGA in South Africa, and most especially when it comes to the exports of African produce to either Europe or the West or any other continent, there's always the issue of standard and quality of this product. So I'd like you to just provide an overview of the current situation regarding the EU citrus black sport regulations and their impact on South Africa's citrus farmers. You know, we don't want to take anything uh, in terms of regulatory very lightly. Uh, obviously, these are consumables. That means that they're going to be eaten and um, human beings are going to consume them. And so, therefore, we need to have the highest standard of quality controls to make sure that uh, they are consumable and they are healthy and they're not going to create any um, un, uh, unpredictable um, uh, um, um, uh, illnesses uh, to anyone. Uh, whether um, locally or, or, or internationally. Uh, however, we also must take into consideration that when regulation changes, uh, what is very, very key and important is that everybody must be a participant, communication must be clear, and also uh, if those regulations are going to be impacting uh, particularly things like jobs and uh, sustainability, uh, we need to communicate that very thoroughly and clearly. Now, you might know that South Africa is the second biggest citrus grower in the world. Uh, we are producing and sending to uh, more than 80 countries across the world. Uh, Europe uh, handles about 35% uh, of, our, of, our, of our exports. And uh, in particular, the EU um, is, 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 is at an extended definition, uh, probably closer to 40%. And so therefore, the South African Farmers Association has been very upset. Uh, obviously, following that decision to uh, bring about new regulations in terms of refrigeration and cooling space of what is supposed to be controlling this disease. Um, and, you know, my, my colleagues locally here call it a false pretense of a requirement uh, because obviously they think that this is protectionism. Um, and, you know, to make sure that South African products don't get into the EU. But this regulation has been fought and the EU has won the case. Um, and so, therefore, Spain is the number one producer, by the way, on top of South Africa. And it, it sounds as if it's an unfair regulatory framework to be asking a country to change things within a short period of time to be able to meet the European standards. All right, we'll put this in a fair balance during the course of our discussion. But then um, the Citrus Growers Association has stated that the EU citrus market supports a significant number of jobs and generates substantial export earnings. Now, you've talked about the contribution of the CGA, this particular sector, um, in terms of the percentage, the GDP, and, of course, to the South African economy. So I'd like you to provide more insight into the role of this particular market to South Africa's uh, economy. And, of course, we know that um, unemployment rates in South Africa is also high. So how would this affect the job market uh, in the country? Yeah, I mean, we're talking about 80,000 tons of oranges that might not make it to the European markets. That's a huge loss of the South African economy. I mean, if you look at it, uh, the citrus exporter, um, we're talking about this 32% of its oranges into the European market. Um, and that's the 80,000 tons that I'm referring to. Um, and you also look at the agricultural space in South Africa, the significant role that it plays. It's particularly 
particularly to low income earners uh, and creating non uh, skillable jobs, which uh, is a fundamental contribution to the South African sector. If you look at our second quarter GDP numbers, the agricultural uh, 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 the agriculture uh, as a sector contributed close to 17 percent of, of our growth domestic product. And that shows you how important that sector is. And so we could be losing up to 150,000 jobs in the sector uh, should this uh, continue to be a problem. Now, you know that there's legal fraternities that have taken place. Uh, South Africa trying to uh, get the, e, uh, the the AU involved, trying to get the uh, the African Union involved to help them, uh, getting some other organisations independently on a, on a competitive side. You know, this 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 competition obviously, and uh, we need to make sure that the the the, the, the we level out the 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 the, the 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 advantages. But here's here's the challenge: is let's ask the right right question. The question is. Is this citrus disease a problem? And the answer is simple. In sub-Saharan Africa, yes, it is a problem. And the way that the EU says it must be controlled is that you must have higher um, uh, uh, refrigeration centers, that meaning that the cooling system must be so sophisticated that it doesn't expose uh, the citrus plant or the citrus fruits uh, to these um, uh, diseases. And the question is, what can we do now? What we cannot do anything now because that requires an additional, guess what? Seven and a half million dollar investment just in the local farming industry. That's 150 million rand that they need to raise to be able to meet those standards. Now, if you were saying to me, we're giving you a, a, a soft closing window to say your target is in uh, November 2024 or 2025, we need you to have met these standards. That's fair enough. But you don't do it and say within 64 days we expect you to be meeting these standards because that's just not going to be uh, feasible uh, for the South African market to be able to meet those demands. Hmm, that's quite um, strong coming from um, you there. But then um, I'd like to look at it this way. We see um, this on pass in between Europe and South Africa's business, as it were, in terms of export. But um, is Europe the only uh, market for South Africa's citrus export? Or the situation is actually dire because the largest chunk of revenue is actually coming from that continent? That is very, very true. Um, but also, we must remember that there are quality controls in place. So this industry has been in existence for a while. Um, uh, post the apartheid regime in South Africa in 1994, the, the, the citrus farmers have increased quite significantly. Competition has increased on the continent. As you just said, rightfully so. Uh, we also have competition in other uh, continents, including South America uh, and Asia as well. So, so we need to understand that the, the, the scales have changed. And, and we're not saying that don't change uh, the game. We're saying that, yes, you can change the game. You can change the rules. But let those rules, when they amend, when they change, to be fair and, and equitable so that everybody can still be able to participate. Uh, but Clive, um, is Clive, it a fair Clive. complainant that they're making? Uh, Clive, sorry to sorry to cut in. Now I know that this is not the first time that um, South Africa will be having this kind of um, discussion or squabble with the EU. Last year, uh, South Africa challenged the EU's uh, phytosanitary requirements relating to the false cotton right. moth. So that that was last year, and this year they are saying, "Hey, you need to up um, the standard when it comes to preserving this particular uh, product." So. Look at that last year up to now, what progress have been made on this front? Because if we are having this kind of discussion with the EU and they are putting their foot down that this is what they want in, in terms of standard, then what steps has the South African Association or the CGA in, in that regards done to accede to the demands of the EU? You know, you make a very good argument, my brother, because obviously uh, standards are very, very important, especially for consumable goods. Um, the, the problem that we have is a timeline. And, and this, what the CGA is saying is that they must be given enough time. Um, but also there's another particle here that's very, very important. Um, we, you need participation and you need the government to be a participant to assist these farmers to be able to meet these standards, particularly when it comes to export. 
The problem is the South African government, and this is no critique on, 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 on the, what they're doing, but I'm saying they've lost it. They've, they've missed the boat because they were supposed to support organizations like the CGA. They were supposed to work with the EU because, remember, there's bilateral agreements between these countries, particularly on trade, on how to actually execute and implement some of these changes that are coming up. The question is, was the CGA caught offside? Were they caught off guard? Were they not aware that these standards have been changed? And the simple answer is they were caught off guard and they have sent in a request to the EU trading partnerships to say, what can we do to be able to delay this process a little bit so that we can be able to meet your standards? And they just simply said no. And, hmm. and because they were given the warning, uh, they didn't adhere to those warnings. And so therefore now there's been implementation and unfortunately it's a bit late. So what, what is the solution? The solution is... Do you want to you lose 35% of your market capitalization into the Euro e EU uh, market? No, of course not, because that means you will lose jobs, you will lose the economy, you will lose a lot uh, uh, on the domestic front. So what you want to do is you want to meet those standards. The question should be, how do we get there as quickly as possible? And this is where government can subsidize. This is where government can pa participate. This is where government can help using regulatory frameworks, using partnerships, bilateral agreements uh, to ease the, the pain uh, in the short term so that at least by the end of that period, they are able to be able to meet the standards and business can continue as normal. Hmm. All right. Now, um, a call for the WTO dispute and urgent action from the South African government has been made. Now, how do you um, expect the WTO to look into the issues and what do you hope or what do you think can be achieved when um, this is invoked? Yeah. Yeah, this is a very futile exercise, my brother. I mean, you know, it's, it's, you, must, you must understand that this has been going on, like you said, since last year. And this, this is just one of the issues that we've uh, seen come out since these new relations. This is, this, this is what we call economically the post-pandemic uh, regulatory framework that has changed business around the world. You need to be able to step up and meet those demands. Uh, I don't see how the WTO will overturn the European decisions uh, to, 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 to require better standards for particularly that region. What I see as a problem, though, is that if we fail, and now meaning we as South Africa, we as Africa, uh, to meet these kind of standards that are required, we're going to lose business ultimately. That's what's going to happen. And so therefore, let us not critique the EU. Let us diversify our businesses so that we can be more competitive and we can get into those markets. Because remember, uh, Spain uh, as the number one um, uh, citrus uh, 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 distributor Producer. within the EU mm. region have a, have a very, very strong, sophisticated um, a procurement process. We need to change our businesses so that they become, uh, they meet the standards globally so that we can be able to be competitive and equal to the task. And maybe that's a call to challenge to the CGA to see how they can learn from other uh, economies and, of course, other businesses, just as you've said, Spain. Maybe there's a bit of learning that they can do or some kind of yeah. technology that they can inculcate into their production and preservation of uh, the citrus so that it can be widely accepted um, by the EU and every other markets that might be um, looking out for it. Thank you so much, Clive Ramatabella-Smith, Senior Executive Partner, Hector Capital and Partners, for talking to us. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Now, all right. Now, uh, with an unwavering commitment, South African citrus farmers seek to navigate the global stage with resilience, urging for equitable regulations that promote fair access to markets and uphold the vitality of their trade. Now, the outcome of this endeavor holds the potential to shape the future trajectory of citrus exports and pave the way for a more balanced and conducive trading landscape for um, South Africa's citrus products. And that is the end of a Business Edge for today. Thank you so much for joining us all the way. You can follow us on social media. We are at New Central TV. Download our mobile app on App Store and Play Store and visit our website, www.newcentral.africa. My name is Liko Onobanjo. Until next time, do enjoy the rest of your day.